this is a really good reference that's uh, a little bit older now, 10 years, but it's still basically the same uh, and reliable information, which was um, looking at uh, doing a literature review with uh, 412 publications reviewed, 28 of which were included, looking across a number of treatments, MVD, radiofrequency, percutaneous balloon compression, SRS, uh, with over 10,000 patients followed with at least a five-year follow-up. And here's what we see. Uh, and this is an important graph. Look at this initial pain relief. All the procedures we do, and this is subject to some selection, selection bias, all the procedures we do have somewhere around a 90 to 100% success rate. Over time, over one year, look, radio frequency will fall off. Percutaneous balloon pressure is pretty good, but then percutaneous balloon pressure starts falling off as well. So there's about a 30 to 40% recurrent rate. But don't think that MVD is the perfect procedure and you don't get recurrences because MVD patients also get recurrent pain. And then you need to go through the process of figuring out what you want to do um, next. These are just a different representation, but acute pain relief, 92%, 90%, 98%. SRS is 80%, it's not shown on that graph. So high rates of acute pain relief um, and the average rate of recurrent pain here is uh, you know, 18%, 46% with radio frequency, 20% with uh, percutaneous balloon compression and SR, 25% SR. So uh, these are important numbers to have a general feel for. Again, I generally think of MVD is the most effective with the least chance of recurrence. Percutaneous procedure is almost equally effective with a slightly greater rate of recurrence. SRS, lower rate of efficacy, but the highest rate of recurrence, but also the safest of the procedures we do. And then of course, it's not just how well they work, but it also has to do with complications. And the complications that we worry about are um, facial uh, hypesthesia or facial changes and corneal uh, hypesthesia, which is a corneal reflex. And you'll see um, percutaneous balloon compression is, sorry, I should say, uh, Radio frequency has amongst the highest. Percutaneous balloon, balloon compression is still high, but not quite as high as radio frequency. Um, there are MVD uh, has some, but it's not as high as the rest. That's probably the most important thing. Radio and anesthesia de la Rosa are related to uh, sensory changes. So, some important information here. Same paper, very good reference for overall understanding the relative contribution of these different procedures. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, so that's all with classic trigeminal neuralgia. I'm gonna start shifting gears a little bit to talk about other types of trigeminal neuralgia. In this case, MS-related trigeminal neuralgia, and I've mentioned this a little bit already. Um, but here's a comparative efficacy of different procedures. So this is percent failure-free, meaning percent success, uh, for patients with trigeminal neuralgia relative to treatment. Balloon compression is a solid black line. Remember I said balloon compression is the treatment of choice for me for patients with um, MS-related to donor neuralgia. And this is uh, one of the main reasons why. And you'll notice that the other procedures like um, microvascular decompression and others are falling off. Uh, they're not as good. There's no advantage of those other procedures. So asking for a history of MS in your history is extremely important because it changes your approach to the treatment. Um, so trying to pull this all together uh, in terms of the treatments for trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, if someone is treatment refractory and they're in a pain crisis and you can get them to the operating room quickly, they're young and healthy, you can do a microvascular decompression. If they're old and sick, and I've had some very old patients, uh, a percutaneous procedure is really what you need to do to, to rescue them. Um, you don't have time for a stereotype radio surgery in someone who's in a pain crisis. I'll tell you, there's one patient I remember quite well from early on in my practice. She was an older lady. She was wheeled in by her daughter, you know, a, several months of pain crisis. She couldn't eat. She could not uh, walk on her own. I, she was an older lady. I questioned why I should be treating her because she didn't look like uh, she had much life to her. After I treated her with her balloon compression, she came in about a month later, walked in, 
and uh, gave me a gift. And that, that's the difference. It was an acute pain relief. And the reason why she looked so old and weak was because she couldn't eat, she couldn't drink. And so these procedures can be life-saving. Um, what about those who are treatment refractory, but they're not in a crisis? Again, MVD, or you can even choose SRS for someone who's young and healthy if they don't want to take the time off from work or they don't want to um, uh, be exposed to the risk of MVD. If they're old and sick, um, we can consider SRS or percutaneous techniques in that case. Again, you're trying to avoid the MVD in older patients. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.